Hi, this is David, and welcome to this editing session with Camtasia. I'm going to try to create a video from scratch before your very eyes. And that means that I am in the post-production process. During the production process, I created the elements that are going to make up the video and now these elements have been finalized and are ready to be dragged to the timeline to the various tracks in order for the post-production editing to take place. So the first thing I'm going to drag to the track comes from my library and it's something that is called a branded opener and a YouTube. Drag it to my track and play it for you and you'll see that Although the dimensions of this element are small, because I did it on a black background, it can fit in with any dimensions that the player is set at. And it has a kind of a fade out that I can use to blend with the next element that comes in. The next element that comes in is a stand-up segment in which I introduce the video. So let's play that and see where it needs to be cut. You can tell that it doesn't fit the 1280, 720, so I'm going to stretch it out so it does fit. And Hopefully we won't get too much distortion. We're about to find out. Okay, let's play it. Hi, this is David. Okay, so not too much excess there. You always want to leave yourself a little bit of ex excess because in the editing process you're going to need it. So I'm going to set my timeline right there. I'm going to hit Split Tool, and then I'm going to take that out. To take it out, simply right click on it so that it's highlighted, go up to delete. And now that brings that up to there. What I'd like to do now is to separate the audio and the video so that, and I like to have my video on the bottom so I'm going to create a track up there and uh, temporarily drag this up there to it so that I got my audio matching here. I'm going to create another track down below this. I'm going to drag this audio down here because I like to have the audio overlapping a little bit so that there is a sense of continuity. There aren't silent gaps. So I'm going to drag this in a little bit. I highlight them both by holding shift and then I drag in. And so that fade out portion right here should help me fade in right here. Hi. It's still a little bit of a silent portion there, so I need to move in more. And that high seemed awfully harsh, so I'm going to fade in that high a little bit. I select the audio track to be edited. Be sure to lock the other audio tracks. And go to audio, and I'm going to fade that in a little bit. I might uh, really increase this a whole lot, bring this back so that it, I don't lose my volume there. There we go. And I'll fade it in enough. I'll zoom back out. Okay, let's play it and see what kind of mix we have. Hi, this is... Still a kind of uh, abrupt, but you know what? That's going to be uh, taken care of just real soon whenever we put a um, transition on it. So uh, let's do that. Now to put the transition on it, I'm going to have to add some more tracks temporarily. And I'm going to have to put... I'm going to have to put these two tracks 
both down below so let's do that add one more track below and both of these tracks are going to have to go below like that and that one's going to go right there okay you you can't have a transition on an audio only track so let's see what we get here I have to do the same thing here Now I should be able to bring that down. Okay, let's see what we got. We'll put a uh, fade transition in there. A fading through black would give a kind of um, start and stop thing to it. But if I put enough of a fade in there, we may get a continuity that we're going for. Hi, this is David, your host. Okay, pretty good. That uh, definitely pretty darn loud right here. You can see the difference in the waveform here and the waveform here. I think what I want to do is to uh, take down the audio here. We'll highlight that clip. And I'm just going to bring down that audio. Let's see if that's a little bit better. Maybe make the fade a little bit more so the fade starts on the fade out of the music. Okay, let's see what we got. Yeah, there Hi, we go. this is David, your host. Okay, that works well. Could put in some, some footsteps there. That uh, That actually may help. So I'm going to go and grab my uh, special effects and get some footsteps. Those uh, initial two footsteps can kind of help bridge the gap there a little bit. I have a folder of sound effects around here somewhere. Sound effects. And we're looking for footsteps. Footsteps, concrete, medium. I guess that was a kind of a medium. So let's uh, open that up. So here's our footsteps, concrete, medium. And they're walking in about right there. Let's see if we can get some footsteps to kind of match up with David's walking. Hey, that's not bad. Hi, this is David, your host. There you go, right there. So we're going to cut that right there, select it, split it, and delete it. Maybe take down the footsteps a little bit. So they're just subtle enough that they don't attract too much attention, but they're um, serving their purpose. Let's try it now. Hi, this is Dave. Take them down a little bit more. Want it to be subtle. Not in your face. One, two. Let's go. Hi, this is David, your host. And today we're going to be talking about a very tough nut to crack. And that is reference citation. Now, when it comes to reference citations, you have basically three options. Option number one is pull out the handbooks, APA, MLA, Chicago Turabian, Harvard, Blue. Just a note, I had to bring down the volume about, oh, I'd say 10 to 20 percent on this segment because I'm using a lavalier microphone. You might be able to see it. Yeah, there it is right there. And different microphones just have different characteristics. This one tended to be a little bit loud and bassy. So I'm going to have, I brought it down a little bit to try to match with the rest of the video. You know, you'll have one, don't worry. 
Now, when you get one of these handbooks, be sure to look through and choose the right citation from well, among the 200 or 300 or so different citation formats and variations, and do a good job of picking those out. There's some clipping and you'll there. You'll be okay. Oh, I got to get a, the exception. I've got to get a new lavalier wireless microphone. I've been putting it off for a year, but I've got to get one. But I think you heard the clipping there. Okay. Now, your second method would be to hey, Google it. Why not? Go to Google, type in APA reference citation. Let's see. That could be a little bit closer. On the zoom in, that could be a little bit closer because it's not going to be visible enough to, Google, the, to the viewer. Why not? Go to Google. So as soon as that goes type up in there. APA. Okay, now, as soon as that got up there, I'm going to try to keep a continuous motion. So the. Zoom in would start right there. I'm going to go to zoom in and bring that thing completely in on the Google Sheet so the text can be read. A little blurry. Okay, let's see if we got that zoom set at the right place so we get continuous motion. Type in APA reference citation, let's see, website with no author. That should narrow it down. Let's see how many results we get. Okay. Now we're going to zoom back out to David because uh, he's supposed to have this kind of funny reaction to it. Let's see. Get that timed right. Let's see how many results we get. Oh, um, 260,000. That's right. Well, hey, just do the first couple of pages. And remember that each web... You know, what we could have done on that, instead of zooming out so far, we could have kept the zoom in a little bit closer. Let's do that. So to edit a zoom, you double-click on it on the timeline so that it's yellow, and then you can edit that particular zoom. So we'll keep it in on David a little bit closer. so that we don't go all the way out on him. Let's try that. Okay. Maybe a little bit slower. Here we go. Let's see how many results we get. Oh, um, 260,000. Well, hey, just do the first couple of pages. And remember that each website is going to be using Okay, now I'm going to do a really gradual zoom back out to 100%. So I'm going to click on this. That gives me 100%. And I'm going to do a really long zoom, make it about a five-second zoom. So here's my start of the zoom right here. And here's the end of it. And that duration is 3.3 seconds. So we'll pull it out about two more seconds. Four and five. So I got a five second zoom. Okay, let's see how that looks. Just a really gradual zoom to get everything back in frame, but not do it too fast so that it takes away from what's being narrated. Do the first couple of pages. And remember that each website is going to be using different examples and some websites okay. might even contradict each other. That worked. That got it back out to original could be a little bit slower. And remember that each website is going to be using different examples, and some websites might even contradict each other. Hmm. Third option. Aha! Citation machine. That's right. There's a machine where you can put in the information that you've got in the library. The citation machine does its algorithm and spits out a citation for you. Now, that's kind of like the difference between counting on your fingers for a math exam. As you can tell, the images were done during the production of this particular segment. And using a Texas Instruments T2000 pocket calculator. But like a pocket calculator. I'm worried about that, that picture of those girls. I don't mean to be putting down girls. They're actually better at math at this age than guys are calculator. You only get a correct answer if you put in the correct information. 
So they're not foolproof. I wish I'd put a yellow border around that uh, call-out box. But I do guarantee you that a citation machine will, more often than not, get you much closer than the handbooks and the Google Sites. Now, which citation machine should you use? There are a lot of good ones out there. But there's only one that gives you both the reference citation and the in-text citation. And that machine is the citation machine. And that's what this video is going to be all about. Okay. And the reason that I zoomed in like that is that I'm going to try to do a crossfade. So I'm going to cut everything right here. Select it, split it, cut it, or delete it. And now I'm going to go to my clip bin and I'm going to bring in the final audio. There is the final audio. And I'm going to bring in the screen capture of Son of Citation Machine. The first thing I have to do is to make sure that the this audio is synced with this video or screen capture. And then I can do my fades and my transitions. So let's, let's see how well this is synced up. This is a brief tutorial on the Son of Citation. Whew, got to bring down that audio. See how much bigger it is than the audio before it? I have to bring that down about 20%. So um, lock everything. Select the audio. Audio. Take it down until it kind of matches the waveform. That looks pretty good. Okay, here we go. This is a brief tutorial on the Son of Citation Machine, sometimes called simply Citation Machine. Its URL is Gosh, that looks synced pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and put in my transitions in. Take the lock out and try to do a crossfade. So we'll go to transitions. This is for Sony Vegas, Adobe Premiere, Final Cut Pro. This is where they're a lot better. If the crossfade doesn't work, I might go with like a random dissolve. But we'll try to crossfade first so we keep our transitions consistent. Okay, let's see how this works. And that's what this video is going to be all about. Boom. He needs to talk right there. This is a brief tutorial. He does. Okay, well that fade looked pretty good. Let's try to extend it a little bit more. It's going to be all about. See how one keeps coming. This there is a go. brief tutorial on the sort right. of citation I'll take machine, it. sometimes called simply. Now, uh, this is a screen capture, and so we have to hold students' attention. Don't want to just be talking at a at a uh, static screen all the time. So let's listen to what is said, and think about how we can use our callouts and our other editing tools to maintain students' attention. This is a brief tutorial on this. Okay, it's going to say the name is the son of Citation Machine. So doggone, I'm going to zoom right in on the squirrel there. And I might even put a... Yeah, let's do that. Okay, let's see how that works. This is a brief tutorial on the Son of Citation Machine, sometimes called simply Citation Machine. It's your okay. Now we got to put in a callout box for its URL. Uh, what kind of callout box? We're going to put it right down there. So let's put this in like that. Excuse me, like that. We can stretch that to either side. Let's make it a box. 
And we're going to put in URL HTTP boom, 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 citation machine dot net. Okay, let's get it up to size 16. That could go to 24. That could go to 32, 36. 36 is looking pretty good. Let's try 38. All right. Excuse me. Now let's do something with the colors. I could either make it blank and make the URL red, or I could make it red and then a white URL. Hmm. Let's try the fill red. And maybe make the text yellow. I just want to make it stand out from what's around it. Bold it. Shadow it. Okay, hey, well, let's put a border around that, babe. Put a yellow border around it. Pump up the border. It's six. There you go. Be center it right there a little bit. Okay, so let's see what we got with the fade in, fade out here. Call simply Citation Machine. It's URL. Okay, so the fading should start about right there. Machine. Its URL is citationmachine.net. Okay, the fade out should start right there. All right, so that call out is done. Its URL is citationmachine.net. Okay, look, and let's go back to uh, full picture here. We'll go to a pan and zoom, click our four corners, and that zoom actually helps to cover up that little bit of that silent space there. Here we go. Citationmachine.net. Boom. It is the first and most widely used citation machine on the internet. All right. Here's how to. Was that a little bit too much of a pause? Yeah, let's take out a little bit of time there. Highlight it, hit the cut tool, see if we can pick up the pace a little bit. Machine on the internet. Dumb. Here's how to use it for APA citations. Okay. Step one. Now we're going to zoom in to APA. I might even put a border around that. For APA citations. Step one. Okay, let's put a border around it. Sound like I, I was gargling there a little bit. Let's let's blank that out. I thought I'd caught all the noises of my voice. We'll highlight that. Select the audio track. Go to audio. Let's see if we can get some silence in there. Let's see what that sounds like. Citation. Step one. Uh, I just have I just have lousy S's. One. In the choose. Okay, now this is where I'm going to put my call out. Got to unlock my tracks here. Go to call outs and I'll put my box around it. What color? Red should be fine. There's the outline of the call out. There's its center. Bring it down to top bottom, right, and left. Let's see how that looks. Make that touch. Touch. Okay, let's see what we got. The Choose Your Style section. Select APA. Select. Now okay. Now that should cause us to zoom back out again. Let's do a manual zoom. See how far we have to go. Move that zoom. Okay, let's see what we got. Select APA. Sure. Next, choose the time. Okay. Okay, we're out. And now we've got to go back in. Choose the type of source. 
type of source that you're using. Okay, here we go. We're going to go in on them. Here are the types of sources. Get kind of an even box there. Okay, pretty legible box. Okay. Let's see if I can move my zoom up to get a little bit more time. We don't give people whiplash here. Source that you're using. Here we go. All types are self explanatory except maybe the difference between a magazine. Okay. I'm going to highlight magazine and journal. Except maybe the difference between a mag MAGA, so that needs to go in. Now I've already got a sketch here so that I can copy and paste. So I copy it, I can paste it in right there. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to take out the fade out, so I select that. I'm going to take out the fade out, because it's going to be, be there for a while. It's between a magazine and... Okay. Now I got to do is get it in the right place. Magazine. Okay. And a journal. And a journal. So we got to put one on top of the other. Copy and paste. So they'll be fading in right after each other. Boom. Something like that. Let's see how that looks. Um, got to position it, of course. Those lines could be thicker, huh? Boom. Okay, I just moved the whole screen. I'm going to go Control Z to put it back. Okay, now I got the box selected, and I'm going to move it in so the circles touch. Okay, and I'm going to definitely make the borders thicker. I might even make them yellow. Yeah, let's make them yellow. Yeah. Border color, yellow. There you go. Could almost go green. So let's take this out again. And we'll duplicate this one. Copy. And paste. Okay, let's see what we got between a magazine, magazine and a journal. Journal. Why didn't the one journal come in? Because I hadn't moved it over there yet. That's why. Okay, try it now. Difference between a magazine, magazine and a journal. journal. Okay. A magazine. All right. Okay, we got those highlighted. Now what I'm going to do is extend those boxes because I'm going to be talking about these for a while. I'm going to extend those boxes and I'm going to start two callouts that are going to explain the difference between magazines and journals for all my darling lovely students who will be viewing this video. Here we go and a journal. A magazine. Okay, so I'm going to start new callouts right up here. I need to start labeling my tracks. I'm going to make them boxes. I should do a, a different color for magazine than for, than for journal. That'll help underscore the difference. So. so let's get two colors here and we'll get two boxes. I'm going to take out the fade and zooms because these things are coming fast. We just don't have time for it. Add a track. Copy this box. It's going to come in after magazines. Okay, let's get some different colors going on here. Let's see. Fill. Magazine. Green and blue. Green and blue. Let's try it. Magazine needs to be a little bit darker. Huh? Now, let's take that gradient out of there. Let's just make it straight. Yeah, that looks a little bit more schoolish. It's hard to say how large that box has to be. 
we'll know more as we get the uh, different text in. So let's keep on playing. Zine is usually sold on newsstands and can. Okay. So first thing is that it's sold on newsstands. Let's go ahead and do a line right. So what we got in terms of sizing, we'll just put in newsstands. And we get that all the way up to top. Okay. Looks like we're going to have to get this box all the way over here. All right. So we got newsstands. Contains consumer. Get this box over here. Get it out of the way. Okay, so we got newsstands. A magazine is usually sold on newsstands and contains consumer. Okay, now we're going to put in consumer advertising. So, asterisk, consumer advertising. Ooh, almost. If we can get it on there. Boom, boom, come on. There you go. That's one choice. The other choice is to bring down the point size, but I don't want to do that yet. Let's keep going. Consumer advertising. However, a okay, now we're going to go over to journal. So we've got to get our journal going over here. We're going to make it the same size. And we've got to get a different color for it. Let's get a blue. Blue and yellow should go well. Okay, let's get the same plain effect. There we go. Okay, what we got on journals? Journal does not contain consumer advertising. Okay, so we're going to put in no advertising. Wish I'd put those in the same order. So we go align left, top, asterisk, no advertising. Keep on going. Consumer advertising and is written by experts. Okay, written by experts. So we can uh, divide that and go. Advertising and it's written. So we'll go, we'll split. And now we'll put in written by experts, and you'll see that it pops in. Written by experts. So it pops in. It goes no advertising. Consumer advertising. And is written, written by experts. experts whose submissions are reviewed. Okay. And then this is the peer review, so we'll split it there. Split. And then I'm going to revise this to say peer reviewed. Reviewed, I guess. All right. Let's see if it pops in. Whose submissions are reviewed by experts in a process called peer review. A magazine. There you go. So we'll keep them going. I need to apply the same pop in process to magazines. Okay, so we need to highlight it, select it. Magazine is usually sold on newsstand Says. and contain. Okay, so we'll split it right there. We'll take out consumer advertising here with a control X and we'll put it in here. Then contain. At least that's what we're hoping to do. A magazine is usually sold on newsstands and contains. There you go. Contains consumer advertising. However, a journal does not. That journal could come in a little bit faster. Okay. However, a journal does not contain consumer advertising and is written by experts whose submissions are reviewed by experts in a process called peer review. Okay. A magazine's articles are written by staff. Okay. So right here we got to have written by staff. So we'll split, select, add an asterisk. Oh, 
written by staff. Okay. Those are written by staff writers and rarely reviewed. Okay, rarely reviewed. Boop. Split. Select. Add an asterisk. That's not an asterisk. Rarely reviewed. Having been a magazine editor, I can attest that to be exactly the case. Oh, our consumer advertising. Come on. There you go. Okay, let's get them in the same position here, shall we? Let's see, what's the position here? We go more visual properties. It's at um, negative 346, 19. This is visual properties, 19. Okay, cool. Both on the 19, so that just means we got to get them the same size. Okay, let's do it. A magazine is usually sold on newsstands and contains consumer advertising. However, a journal does not contain consumer advertising and is written by experts whose submissions are reviewed by experts in a process called peer review. There's no way. That thing has got it. There it is. Now it's up there where it's supposed to be. A magazine's articles are written by staff writers and rarely reviewed by outside experts. Fantastic. I split it. And we are done. Hold down Shift, copy them both, right click, delete. Okay, now what we're going to do, Mr. Narrator. If you need more explanation, okay, we're going to scroll down. That was done. If you need more, ex okay, got to get rid of those babies right there too, huh? So we'll select, split, select, delete. Okay, let's go. Right, experts. If you need more explanation, if you need more, hey. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to have to, no, we can get rid of the video because I was recording while that was double pumped there. Okay. Cut. Let's look up. Right, experts. Okay. A little bit too much of a pause, so let's cut out some of that. Pick up the pace. By outside experts. If you need more explanation, there we go. Citation Machine provides a quick definition of each in the boxes below. Excellent. Okay, let's choose Journal, since this is the time. Should that have come in earlier? Let's see if we can make it come in earlier. Journal. Okay, let's choose Journal. That's when we want our cursor to appear. Okay, let's, let's choose, choose Journal. journal. Okay. Cursor should be there, and boom, cursor is there. Okay, cut that out, and that's called syncing. Whenever the narrator says, let's choose journal, you want that same action to happen okay. on the screen. let's choose journal. Boom. Since this is the type of publication your professors most often recommend that you use. Okay, I can speed things up a little bit. I see a gap there. Choose the red. Cut out about half of that. Let's go. Men that you use. Talk. Now you choose between auto. Okay, got to zoom in on auto fill and manual mode and highlight that choice. Okay, so let's get a highlight in there. We'll draw a box around it. Call out. Give me my box. My action. I think I want to make this one red. Or do I want to keep it consistent? No, I want to make it red. Yeah. Okay, give me some draw time. About a half a second. Line it up. See how those see how I line up 
watch the timeline turn yellow when I line up the beginning of the fade in with the end of the zoom pop. So I, we, I know that they're now uh, coordinated. You choose between auto fill oh. mode. And so the zoom stopped. When the zoom stopped, the call out motion began instantly. One more time and you'll see it. Choose between auto fill mode and manual mode. I've never had much luck with auto fill mode. Keep that going to right, about right there. Let's see what, what I have to exit. So for this, mm, cut out some time. That was too much of a pause. I always put in more pausing than I think I'll need. It's always easier to cut it out than it is to put it in. Lock with auto fill mode. So for this exercise, please select manual mode. There you go. Oh man, it kind of makes me want to put in some cursor effects, huh? Let's see what we got. Cursor effects. Select a camera record or recording. There we go. Let's see, a highlight effect. I got a spotlight. Let's see what. Oh, too much. Let's go. Spotlight. Rings. Magnify. Nah, let's just go. Let's just go uh, left click effect rings. Maybe increase the cursor size a little bit. <laughs> Laptop click, I think people are more familiar with. Let's see what we've got there. Much luck with auto fill mode. So for this exercise, please select manual mode. Okay. I like this. And on subtle. the next page. And we'll do something different for that. Okay, let's go. Page, you literally fill in the blanks. Here are a few hints. Contributor type. Look at the information found. Phew, I needed to be zoomed out there. Okay, so we need to find a place to zoom out. How about when I click on manual mode? So for this exercise, please select manual mode. Boom, we'll zoom out right there. And I'll try to, not to get in too many of those ads. I know the man's got to make money, but... Okay, here we go. Exercise, please select manual mode. Okay, it needs to come in a little bit sooner. Guys, please select manual, manual mode. mode. Very good. And on the next page, you literally fill in the blanks. Here are a few hints. Okay, zoom back in. Lots of zooming. Make sure the students see exactly what we're Here talking about. Here are a few hints. Contributor type. Look at the information. Hey, well, I'm going to take out that left click business. I think I'm going to take out those sounds because I can't control all of them. Cursor effects, I'm going to take out sounds. Some of them were going on underneath the video. Okay, let's go. A few hints. Contributor type. Look at the. Okay, need to zoom out on that. Go to zoom. That should be enough of that. Actually, it's the first time I'm here, so why not show them everything? Yeah. Okay. Get that over. So we got contributor type. Look at the information found about your article in the library. Unless the information says contributor. Okay, time to zoom in. 
maybe a little bit later. Let's see. She says contributor, editor, compiler, or translator. Assume that the names you that's okay. C are author names. In our case, okay, let's highlight it. In our case. So we'll click on call outs. How do we want to let's just keep on doing our boxes here. At least keep that consistent. Oh god. Control Z, thank you. Okay. All right, that should do it. We do, do need some draw time. Half a second should get it. So we've got names. In our case, a little bit fast, a little bit slower draw time. Try a second. For names. In our case, you see that Michael Jones is clearly labeled. Keep it going. Labeled author. Ah, switched. Why did it switch? Oh, we went back. So I got to cut it right there. Boom. Delete. Ah, I almost want to put a transition in there. So we go, I'm going to zoom out. This is a good lesson. I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to find the exact frame where that, where that switchback happened. Happened right there. That's the frame right there. That's the frame right there. So I'm going to split and I'm going to get me a uh, transition that shows that I can flip, I'm flipping back and forth between the library page and the citation machine. I, I think block shows that really well. The flip shows it really well. Let's see if that's too quick. Author. Yeah, it's a little bit too fast. Author. Boom. Okay, and as soon as I get back, I want that to be 100%. Let me take out the flip momentarily. Put that right there. Zoom and pan, 100%. I want that to be 100%. Or maybe down on the author right there. Okay, now let me put my flip in. <sighs> flip was fast. Let's do a cube. Flip was too fast. Okay, now let's try it. Old author. Boom. There we go. We got it. Simply type in author. Okay, all we got to do is go in a little bit. We'll take our time on doing this. Take our time. By taking our time, I mean the length of the zoom so that we can uh, maintain action. Okay, that's what we got. Simply type in author name. Okay, I can increase that zoom a little bit. Let me move it over there a little bit. Okay, let's see. Simply type in author names first and last. If there's more than one author, Click on the okay. I need to make that happen a little bit faster, the names portion, because the click on thing right here, if there's more than one on, uh, is hidden by when I type in the last name. So I'm going to have to shorten that zoom, and I'm going to have to uh, make things happen faster. Let's make it happen faster. So I can get, I'm going to isolate my audio because the audio is faster than the video. So I've got to cut the video to make it match. So I'll cut that part of the video. And let's see if it matches a little bit better. Author. Simply type in author names first and last. If there's more than one author, click on the Plus, whew, we need about three seconds. Okay, let's cut out some more here. Michael. Simply type in author names first and last. 
If there's more than one, one option, and two click on and the three. Plus. That's not bad. That's not bad. Uh, delete a little bit of that, and I think we got it. I think we got it. Simply type in author names first and last. If there's more than one author. Okay, now we're ready to zoom in on more than one author. And we'll put a little box around that. That's our, our sketch motion, so we can just copy it and paste it. Again, I'm going to match them up perfectly. Bring it down, one author. And that's got it. Okay, here we go. If there's more than one author, click on the plus one author tool to add authors. All right. Okay. Now we can speed things up by cutting on both the video and the audio. Let's see what we got. Authors. Transition. For this article, we have only one, Michael Jones. All right. Okay, so we've got a big long pause there. Let's see what comes next. Next, <laughs> the article's title. Okay, next, the article's title. So I should pan down to article's title like so. We'll put that in the empty space here. Let's see what happens. Jones. Next. Okay, so it should be next right there. Next should be right there. Oops. Uh, revise that, edit that, zoom, okay. All right, let's see what we got. And we're going to delete this so that the next comes in right away. And I don't want to delete the video this time. I want to delete the audio so that the next comes in right away. Okay, here we go. Well, Jones. Next. Next, the articles. Hey, we got to keep that on there. So I'm going to extend the frame. So I right click and I'm going to extend the frame. And let's see how long I need to extend the frame for. Next, Next the article's title. In AP. Okay. So how long is that? That is. Two and a half seconds, let's call it. Okay. So I right click, extend frame, two and a half seconds is 60, 90. Wait a minute, two and a half, that'd be 120 plus 30, so it'd be 150 seconds. Okay. Let's see what we got. Next, the article's title. Ah, still not far, not long enough. Next, oh, the ahead. article's title. Extend frame, have a couple more seconds. Next, the article's title. In okay. Next, the article's title. Now I'm going to put in it a text box that's going to explain the capitalization of APA article titles. I've got about up 55 minutes on this. I think I've done pretty much everything once that I was going to do to uh, show you some editing techniques. So I'm going to stop it at, at this point and just consider the rest of the stuff kind of um, uh, redundant. I, I think you get the general gist of it. So uh, good luck on your projects, and I hope this live demonstration helped you a little bit.